Hey guys, what's going on? Today is a big day for me for a few reasons. I have reviewed several pairs of Fortis boots so far, but never one of my own. So without further ado, let's jump into this and see what we're dealing with. I give you the Fortis Dakar boot in Mushio Horsebutt, as well as this olive here is Wicket and Craig traditional harness leather. But they come with two extra sets of laces, a sticker, which I'm a sucker for, a beautiful Fortis boots bag. Ride your boots every day. This is a model that's been a long time in the works. I first heard of Fortis boots from my buddy Tech at Bootlosophy. He did a collab with them. The Fortis, I believe it was called the Rider boot. It was like a red rough out color, super gnarly. That was also in the Dakar model. I actually asked Sani what Dakar means and he said he said he took the name Dakar from Arabic which means tough simple never give up not easily discouraged and firm so he applied this name to the article on regular boots which are simple namely plain toe but still strong and still have character like the original from the first article I made the brown that we're seeing here is the Mushio and then the Olive leather is actually Wicket and Craig traditional harness olive for the vamp and back section. All right, so first and foremost, let's talk about the specs. So I designed these boots. I wanted to make them unlike any other boot that I had in my collection, and I'm a sucker for green, and I'm obviously in love with Mushio horse butt, which Viberg has run in the past, which initially turned me on to it. It's just beautiful. The most recent pair of boots I reviewed by Fortis were my buddy Mario, otherwise known as Boot Reaper on Instagram. His Roper boots, the first ever Roper boots that Fortis did in Mushio Horsebutt. I will leave a link to that video in the description below so you can check that out if you're interested. I was just blown away by that pair. I'm also very, very blown away by this pair. Let's go over the specs. So we've got Mariam Tannery TPR Mushio Horsebutt in the mid section here. Uh, comprising the quarter and the shaft. TPR is thermoplastic resin, basically gives it a nice sheen on the outside, and it, it's basically a good layer of protection for the leather. And so we've got Wicket and Craig, traditional harness olive for the vamp and back heel counter. We've got Dr. Soul Original Super Grip Black Half Sole for the outsole. I really like black uh, contrast against the rest of it. Black, green go together well green, brown go together well, all three go together very well. A woodsman heel right here, one of the best woodsman heels I've ever seen done before. This is something that the boot makers would have to sand and polish off themselves. And so expertly done on both. One thing that you can look for for skill is the consistency and the consistency is definitely there. That takes a lot of skill. Uh, it's similar to like woodworking. To make two wood pieces the same would be a similar process. There's a lot of sanding, a lot of eyeballing involved. And so that's where boot making becomes an art. It's uh, expressed right there in that woodsman heel. So we've got Welt Schoen Construction. Welt Schoen means field shoe construction, which is a term that comes from Dutch boot making. Basically, it looks like a Goodyear welt. Uh, there are some differences. I'm not nearly expert enough to get into those differences right here right now. I'll have to do a follow-up video and really do my research. But to me, it looks like a stitch down in the front, 180 degree stitch down in the front. And then it looks like a standard Goodyear welt throughout the back, the rest of the the welt. It is a 360 degrees. It's a single welt stitch on the back half, double stitch down welt stitch on the front half. These would typically retail, if you were to order these, they'd be about $650, which will include the shipping cost. Shipping from Indonesia is not cheap at all. Because these are both premium materials, it drives the price up some. So if you're interested, uh, please DM Fortis Boots on Instagram, or you can email them at fortisboots at gmail.com. And also, real quick shout out to my friend Allie, who I just met with her and her husband Jake in Philly yesterday. Uh, had a great time. We went to a museum, and uh, then we went to the uh, Reading Terminal, and we stuffed our faces with 
delicious sandwiches and donuts. I was even blessed enough to be able to introduce to them uh, wheatgrass shots, which I'm a big fan of. I try to do wheatgrass, a double shot of wheatgrass once a month. It's incredible for your health. Uh, I got the best night's sleep last night because of the wheatgrass. Packed full of benefits. I recommend it to anybody. If you're at a juice bar and you see grass growing in a tray, ask for the wheatgrass. You will not be disappointed. It's not for the taste, it's for the uh, the health benefits. <laughs> Hey, you want me to show you how it's done? Yeah. Let me show you how it's done. All right, take it. Wheatgrass. Oh, I savor that flavor. Just kidding. No, you want to shoot it. <laughs> Good to the last drop. <laughs> okay. It's a double, so it's going to go down count. <laughs> nice. Take it like a man. Yeah, you, you might, not that bad. You might want to taste it. No, it's not that bad. My turn. Good. Yeah, it's not terrible, right? No. Yeah, it's. it's I would want it like. Interesting. Actually. Oh, it's not that bad. It's not terrible. It tastes like like grass. I mean grass. <laughs> it tastes like melted <laughs> But it's not like that strong, so it's not. Right, right. I don't know, because you've given me like the veggie juices and stuff like that, and, you know. So I feel like I kind of. A little bit of, of a tolerance. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. bad. Uh, Thank you. I don't need to taste it for that. Yeah, so, <laughs> so far, yeah, I don't hate that as much as I thought I would. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, let me know how you feel tomorrow. Yeah, Allie, otherwise known as the Vintage Feather on Instagram and YouTube, she actually has some Fortis El Tuto boots. Her pair is particularly nice. So Ali says, as a lot of you may know, I love to pair green and black together because not only do I think they look amazing together, they're also my favorite colors. So when I had the opportunity to design a custom boot with Fortis boots, I knew I had to get black and green. I also knew I wanted kilties. I gotta say, I think they look pretty awesome. The leathers here used are Badalassie Pueblo and Badalassie Minerva. I think they are nice leathers that go well together and yes, they definitely do. Job well done, Allie, on that build. I am jealous. I talked to Sani, and he said that I asked him what El Tuto means, the El Tuto style, and he says El Tuto is the word I play from the LTT abbreviation for lace to toe. Okay, so it is their lace to toe model. So I just play with it as El Tuto, LTT. So it has a Spanish essence to it. El Tuto. Actually, Tuto in Italian means all. Tutto. Spanish would be the todo, todo, everything in Spanish. Okay, so let's go through the thought process of why I designed this boot the way I did. Well, I have a lot of all solid green boots, but I don't have any contrasting green boots. And so I wanted to go for a combination two-toned leather with these to start experimenting with that because believe it or not, I don't have a lot of two-toned like this. I'm really drawn to that Dakar model. I love the tall shaft. It's an eight inch shaft. I love the look of the last, nice almondy rounded out last, absolutely beautiful. The toe is unstructured. It might be stiffened up a little bit. It's got, it's got some good structure to it, but it doesn't have like a elastic piece in there or anything like that. The back heel stay is very well structured and wow, I'm just in love. You know, I recently did my top 10 boots of all time video before I filmed this video, but I can tell you that these would definitely make that cut as well. Fortis are doing something just extraordinary over there. They're definitely one of my favorite Indonesian makers, no doubt about it. They contend with all the rest. They're all amazing. You know, they all do such good work. They all sort of make the boots just a little different. They have slightly different designs, but they're mostly doing the same type of construction where they really excel, in my opinion, is in the sole work. That's where the boot, their boots really come to life is this thick veg tan, these Cuban heels, all this leather beneath your feet. I mentioned it in almost every single video that I think that, you know, I really love having thick veg tan beneath my feet. It's It really just adds so much support, so much dense ergonomic support that really, you know, I have a bad back and so I need, if I'm gonna be standing up a lot, I need that really, really dense veg tan because it will mold to your foot and it also just provides the best cushioning. No sort of synthetic anything could ever provide this type of cushioning. This is the dense long-term. This is the type of boot if you're a distance runner, in other words, not a sprinter. And so if you stand up and sit down sporadically throughout the day, then it's fine to have like synthetic insoles. But if you're standing like for hours, you want more veg tan, you know, 
it's like a it's like the bike seats you know you could buy a cheap super jelly bike seat and it might feel super squishy and cushiony for about 10 minutes but try riding 50 miles on that thing yeah you'll you'll end up hating it my favorite feature that Fortis does so beautifully is this loop stitch. They do it both here on both sides of where the quarter meets the vamp. They also do it on the back heel stay as well. Absolutely beautiful, unique. It's not too complicated. It's just very subtle, but at the same time, very sophisticated. I love the look of that. The back heel stay is double stitched and it leads up to a very nice pull tab, all in Mushio. So this part of the back heel stay, the upper part, is in Mushio along with the pull tab. But then the back heel counter itself is going to be in the Wicket and Craig olive harness. Beautiful contrasting here. And then we come around to the side profile. Mushio horse butt here. Wicket and Craig olive harness here. I just love the contrasting. We've got a triple stitch the quarter to the vamp. Beautiful. Back heel stay is triple stitched down. Super duper hardy. I love looking at the doctor sole and seeing the nails in here. I love that. Yeah, you can see the welt stitching through from the outsole. I'm really in love with earth tones, and this boot to me is the earthiest of earth tones. It captures all the earthiness you could ever want. I love the tall boots. Uh, the Truman Upland really turned me on to taller 8-inch shafts. I'm a big fan of them now. I don't find that they're too tall. I find that they're just the right height. So the tongue is also 100% Mushio and it is a T-core, and you can tell that because when you look on the other side, you see the natural, and I can see how deep the pigment goes. It's very surface level pigment, and so if that scratches, it's gonna reveal natural undertones and just look super good. Uh, I can't tell if the Olive Wicket & Craig harness is T-core, but I will be able to tell over time. And finally, what everybody's been waiting for is the size comparison. And so these Fortis, are in a size 42. That's my true to size. 42s up against the Grantstone eight and a halfs. Yeah, the eight and a half, and they look a half size longer than the Fortis in a size 42. Grantstone eight and a half, Leo last. All right, let's do Truman next. Truman boots 79 last. They look to be pretty identical. So yeah, they look about the same. Viberg service boot eight and a half, 20, 30 last. Yeah, the eight and a half, is a half size long on me, and they look a half size longer than the Fortis in a size 42. All right, Wolverine 1,000 mile boot, eight and a half up against Fortis, 42. They look to be pretty identical. Alden True Balance Vintage Indies. Yeah, those look to be about a half size larger than the Fortis in a size 42 as well. So to make this review as complete as humanly possible, I wore these boots all day today. The fit is perfect. True to size, size 42 for me. I'm a nine Brannock. These are a size 42 EU. Perfect fit. I would definitely say take your true to size, whatever your EU size is. White's MP service boot, size eight and a half versus Fortis, size 42. I would say that the sizing between these two brands is consistent if you go up in Fortis by a half size. So I go down the half for the White's MP service boot on the 55 last. I'm a nine Brannock, up a half to a true to size. My EU size is 42 for the Fortis. And I would say the sizing between the two is equivalent using that methodology. All right, Nix slash Nobleman's Apothecary Swashbuckler boot on the 55 last in natural waxed flesh. Once again, same size, same last, eight and a half on the Nix up against Fortis, size 42. Length to me looks to be the same. Toes a little bit more rounded out on that Nix 55 last. A little bit more pointy, but overall, I would say the same amount of volume. No complaints on the fit on these Fortises. Another one of my favorite things about these boots that I forgot to mention in the in the original recording was the laser etched Fortis boots logo on the insole. I've zoomed in to provide you with a good look at what that looks like in my other Fortis boot reviews. I actually showed 
uh, I took a screen grab of Fortis's process by which they laser etch that logo on there and it is just so cool. I love it. In other news, my buddy Mike Smith, who I had a real boot talk with not too long ago, he actually gifted me some Rakado marbled shell. So this is going to be emerald marbled Rakado shell cordovan and lava marbled Rakado shell cordovan. I've got kilties. I've got three sets of these available. I have four sets of these available. They are the most expensive kilties I'll ever, probably ever sell on my site. They're $70, so I am sending one set to Mike, and that's why they are very limited. They smell wonderful, they smell like candy. They smell like a combination of like coffee, toffee, caramel, and candy. They just smell incredible. I'd say they're worth it for the smell alone, but, <laughs> and the backs of them, super cool too, super painted, and the fronts, just super marbly. So anyways, dalesleatherworks.com, if you're interested in some kilties that may never be made ever again, these may never exist. I mean, already they're, they're never gonna exist again. I mean, each set is so unique. From set to set, you know, the marbling is just gonna, very wildly so and same with the backs i mean the backs are just just so crazy so super huge thank you to mike for sending me the, the pieces of shell the first shell i've ever worked with i really enjoyed working with it wow is it beautiful stuff i i'm in love i'm definitely tempted to get more it's just so expensive and i don't know if the kilties will sell you know they might they might though so check them out links in the description below so what can I say in closing? Super happy going true to size with these. Size 42, I would say take your, your true EU size. Definitely a perfect fit, plenty of room in the toes. Beautiful fit throughout the midfoot and in the back heel stay as well. Good amount of grip back there. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching guys. Go give Fortis Boots a follow on Instagram if you're not already. I'll leave a link to their Instagram in the description below. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching. Let's keep the love of boots alive. I'll see y'all in my next video.